revealing the results of a huge laundry transformation. Naturopath Tammy Guest is back to discuss how to eat to feel your best on a reno site. I have another plan to the day from the Greenery in Sydney and I break down a DIY buffet makeover. electricians, advantage plumbing, we've had the cutting edge joinery team installing these amazing cabinetries. Quite traditional, which I like, but with some super powered practical functional stuff inside from Hefeli, which I will show you really soon. So this means for me, a lot of people would stop here. A lot of people would go, I've got my appliances in. So you, you've seen the awesome high air appliances that have gone in. We've got in our sink, we're just waiting on our stone bench top. So a lot of people go, check, I am done. I can use this laundry. In fact, I was washing and drying in here last night. But for me, there is still so much missing from here. It feels impersonal, it needs some love, it needs some beauty, as well as some extra functionality. So I'm gonna turn my attention now to the opposite wall. We have this wall covered. Now let's work out what we can do on this one. At the moment, it is just as simple as we found out when I was taking the splash back off soft Jiprock wall. Now remember, this is a medium renovation. This is not a high, um, a high budget renovation. We're keeping the floor and I'm actually going to be keeping the skirt tile on this opposite side. But what I want to do is I want to install some hanging laundry baskets so that the family can come and sort their own, we hope, into lights, darks and colours. Now to do that on this Jiprock wall would mean that it'd probably get knocked up and really look pretty bad after probably a month. So I want to install some panelling and also some tougher paint finishes on there so it will stand the test of time. And above that, as I mentioned earlier, I want to look at putting in some beautiful customised drying racks as well as some wallpaper that's going to bring some character, some texture and some pattern into this laundry as well as tie in the warmer brown tones that are already in the floor. challenges I'm going to have with this battening is I am not, as I mentioned, removing this skirt. So I only have a really small lip to play with. So I've actually had pre-cut from my local hardware supplier some really thin timber battens. And I'm going to install these on top so they're not going to look like the original sort of panelling that you'd imagine. They're a great tweak so I can still get the effect, I can still get the durability without having to risk replastering this whole wall and damaging my floor. So I've spaced these out. First I did it visually, because let's face it, they need to look good. And then I've measured it out to make sure that they're an equal distance apart. I'm actually gonna be sitting that on top of the tile skirt, making sure that it is absolutely vertical and then tacking it on with some really small nails. I'll then countersink them, putty them, paint them, and we're ready to go. Now the height that I've used to choose this is actually all about functionality, all about the height that I want the top rail to be and hence where I want the laundry baskets to hang from. I didn't want them too low because then they would hang on the floor. This is a wet area and I certainly don't want wet bags of clothes hanging from the wall and touching the floor. So I've done them high enough that once they're hung on their hooks, they'll have good floor clearance so it doesn't matter what happens in this room, they will stay dry. This wallpaper is from Kingdom Home and is perfect for the laundry as it will have water, pets, kids, you name it in this room. This one can actually be wiped down and will handle anything the kids can throw at it, literally.
Now that that beautiful wallpaper is in place, I'm gonna get really busy fixing off that top button on the DIY paneling. gapping in a place that you intend to paint over, make sure you use the right gapping product. It's not your standard silicon that you would use in your bathroom or on a splashback. It's actually an acrylic silicon that you can paint over with most paints afterwards. So make sure you get the right one. Now that this is all drying off, my putty and my silicon is drying off, I'm actually going to get to taping up that door. Now, it has been treated previously with a high gloss polyurethane finish. And so I'm going to need to undercoat and make sure that I seal that in really well. And I'm using one of my favorite products for that, the Zinza Cover Stain. Now this cover stain, as I said, is one of my favorite products but it is also oil-based, so it is a Terps cleanup. So I'm gonna wear some gloves so I don't have to clean my hands up with Terps, because there's one thing that I know I am, and that is messy. I'm also gonna try and roll this cover stain on to make sure that I get a really nice, um, clear finish with minimal brush strokes. To do that, I'm gonna use one of the short nap microfiber rollers. Now my first coats of paint were on my panelling and on my door. So both of those were an enamel. I used an alkalide enamel on this panelling because I wanted something a bit more robust than a low sheen. And I used a gloss enamel with an oil base on the door to make sure that it was truly, truly hardy because it's gonna get a pile of wear and tear as people go in and out with washing out to the clothesline. But on the rest of the walls, I am harking back to my old in favorite, which is a Taubman's in jaw. And I'm gonna be popping that on the very few places that you can still see the old sort of fawny brown taupe color. of the gloss enamel is dry. I did it over 20 hours ago now. So now I'm gonna give it just a light rough up with sandpaper, clean down and do the final coat. The blue is just turning out beautiful. I've painted me, I've painted the walls, I have painted everywhere. And now one of the things that I'm wanting to bring into this space is much more storage and the ability to dry clothes in there, the ability to have laundry baskets off the floor, the ability to have the peg out baskets away and not living in the lounge room space and the, the dining room space and the spare bedroom space like happens at so many homes. And so I've adopted a, an idea um, and I'm using an off the rack IKEA product. So this is some random form of kind of hanging, drying storage rack that I am going to first try and build. I think it was easier to paint. And then I'm gonna customize it because if I put in this sort of matte silver drying frame into that beautiful navy white floral pale blue dusty brown laundry it is going to look really out of place and this is a perfect example of off the rack things can be customized we don't have to buy old or recycled or second hand to want to customize you can actually buy new
Now that I've got these drying wraps together, I'm gonna to give them that beautiful navy finish that I talked about. So first, I'm going to rough them up a little bit with a metal um, sanding pad. I'm then going to etch them, prime and etch them, to make sure that when I'm hanging coat hangers on here, and when I'm hanging, you know, baskets over them, that they don't get scratched up. And then finish off with, we know I'm a White Knight fan, finish off with one of the White Knight skirts in this beautiful, deep navy. Always super important to spray paint in a well ventilated area or even outside. Now it's time for the stone to go in. Stone Obsessions are so incredibly professional and the finished product is just amazing. washing baskets but instead I've got myself some gorgeous navy striped um, linen and what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to make three custom laundry baskets out of it one for the darts one for the lights and one for the delicates so this fabric is 115 centimeters wide and oh actually 1.2 wide and I got three meters of it now from that top rail of the battening to the floor, it is around a meter. I don't want these hanging on the floor. So I'm gonna aim for these to be around 900 mil or 90 centimeters in length. They are gonna look like little sacks. And the reason that I'm doing this is I wanna be able to change up some elements in my laundry as I choose. So you know, next year if I want these to be apricot, they can. If I want them to be white, if I want them to be linen, if they get grubby, I can throw them in the washing machine or replace them. A really tiny investment for a really big bank buck. So all I'm gonna do, I'm going to cut this into three separate sacks, pop some little gold eyelets on them, and then secure them to hooks on the wall. As simple as that. And if you're not a sewer, never fear. You do need a sewing machine, but you don't need a lot of sewing prowess. There you have it, a stylish and practical laundry the whole family can enjoy. Plant of the Day with Chloe from the Greenery Sydney. 
So Chloe, by far one of the most popular plants of probably the last two years, would you say? Yeah, definitely. It is the... Ficus lorata or... Fiddle leaf! That's the one. Everyone loves a fiddle leaf, don't they? They do. And they go like hotcakes when they hit the stores. They really do. But you know what? I love the way it looks, but gee, I've had some bad luck with them. <laughs> You're not the only one. They can be a little bit fiddly, but once you... No pun intended. <laughs> no. <laughs> but once you do get it right, they're very easy. So what is the right formula then for a fiddle leaf? Um, you need to give it a name. I need to give it a name. You should give it a name. Johnny. There you go. That's okay, Johnny. Name. So that's the first one, is it? Give that's it a name. The first one. Johnny, what do I need to do to keep Johnny alive? Okay, so you want them in a bright room and not near a window that's getting any direct sunlight. So they obviously <laughs> don't like being cooked then. Because no. that's effectively what happens, right? When you have a plant right near that's a right. window, it just gets cooked with the heat. Their leaves will just burn. So definitely away from the window but in a really bright room and it will thrive what about watering though because I, I think there's this bad circle that people get into they have it near a window so they can get light it starts to burn they think it needs water yeah. they water they love they love Johnny <laughs> and then Johnny just becomes a twig and they water too much so they do like water but they really like to air out in between waterings they a good tip would be to stick your finger right about an inch to two inches into the soil. That's a really long way. <laughs> if that's dry, then you're good to give it another water. Okay. And when you give it a water, a pot of this size, mm -hmm. which is, you know, nearly a foot mm -hmm. in diameter, mm -hmm. how much water do you, do you give it? Or do you just make sure that it's well drained mm -hmm. so anything it doesn't need, it discards? That's right. So you want it to be draining out the bottom of the pot. Um, and another way you can do it is... I don't know about this size, but a lot of people like to put them in the shower and let the water run down over the leaves. Well, it's a great way to dust them. It is. It's perfect. So if you can't put it in the shower, you can put it outside, put it up high and just give it a hose down. But bring it in. Don't leave it outside. Don't in the leave sun. it outside. <laughs> All right. Well, Johnny, I might actually take you into your new home and report back to Chloe in maybe a month. That sounds great. Welcome back, Tammy, to talk to us about wellness while renovating so that we make good choices the whole way through. Now, today is one that is close to my heart because I am a big eater in the morning, and it is... Food is fun. <laughs> Food is fun, especially when it's going in mind. <laughs> so what is today's hack for us to stay well on reno? Today's hack me is something that helps with renovations, right? Colours. It does. Some. <laughs> Some colours, yes. Some colours. And the same thing goes for food and drink. And okay. when it comes to the colours of food and drink, brown and beige is out. Brown and beige is okay for drink. Wine is beige. <laughs> so and wine. beer is brown. <laughs> yes. Okay, sorry. All right, what are the oh, real colours? Get serious. Coffee is also brown. Tea okay. is also brown. Diet Coke is, Diet Coke is also brown. <laughs> we have uh, packet food, which is also brown. Most takeaway food is mostly brown and brown. Oh my gosh, you are a freak. <laughs> you have looked at this. Brown generally gives us a brown and beige kind of life and health. Wow. My only fluid intake may be beige. <laughs> On that note, we're what should we be doing? And we're going for a bit of clarity and clear things like water, but mm. we're also going for the colourful scenario of anything that's plant-based. You know, we use okay. plants in the house, we've got to use plants in our bodies as well. Right, so space medicine on the inside. Yes! Space medicine on our insides. But when you say plants to me, I automatically think, oh my gosh, I've got to cut stuff, I've got to toss it, I've got to cook it, it doesn't come out of a ziplock. Yep, but <laughs> have you been to a local supermarket lately? Everything is prepackaged in that plant area as well. So it doesn't matter if it's easy as long as it's a plant. Totally. Okay. Yeah, we're just aiming for five colours a day. Super simple. Five different colours? Five different colours, that's it. Are there that many in plants? Yes, of course there is. Lettuce, yeah. green. Green. Tomato, red, mm. capsicum, all of the other yep. red related ones. 
Uh, we've got blue, blueberries and um, eggplants and all of these amazing lemon. kind of stuff. Yellow, lemon, yeah, orange, oranges, um, mandarins. We've got all of it. Fruit comes in its own package. You literally pick it up and eat it on the way while you're driving. What if you're not a big sugar monger? I'm not a big sugar person and fruit's like got a little bit of sugar in it, right? Yeah, right. So what are my other options that are quick and easy? Carrots, especially okay. with baby carrots. Uh, Why? They're, they're tiny and they're like totally eatable really quickly and easily on the way right between different places. And you don't need to cut them up. That's right. Okay, hack number one for non-fruit lovers. Fruit lovers, I think, have got it made for colors. Yeah. Okay, for non-fruit lovers, carrots. Baby cucumbers are out now. We've Ooh. got baby capsicums that are out now. You can get We've baby got capsicums. nuts, seeds. Uh, They're brown. Yes, they are, but that's one colour. That's the problem. We're not just sticking with the one colour. So it's not that brown is five. bad. That's right. It's got to be one brown. That's it. Okay. <laughs> all right. I think I can do that. So five colours? Yeah. Five colours. So fruit lovers could go all fruits, yep. or they could mix it with fruit and veg mm -hmm. and brown. Yep. And we've got the ability to create juices now. There is just as many juice bars that are available as there That's are true. places to find decent coffee. So, uh, and I'm not saying cut out your coffee completely, but if that's your only source of energy and, and liquid, it's probably going to be on a long-term Renault, a little bit of a problem and a little bit of an issue for your body. So if I say to you, I need something that I can do every Sunday night, to get me at least four days, because Friday is kebab day, and that has colour. Yes, it does. That does have some green totally, stuff. Totally, yes. And some yellow stuff. And that's the thing, if you're buying it, just make sure you've got all of the different colours in there. Okay. Kebab actually has quite a fair bit of colour. Kebab Friday. So, <laughs> what do I need to do on a Sunday to get me through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday with my greens, without having to do anything during the week? Juice it. And it will stay for four days? Yep. Yeah. Soup it. Oh no, I need a spoon. <laughs> what else? I am the worst ever client, aren't I? Salad it, stir fry it, turn it into a curry. There's a whole bunch of ways <gasps> of batching that can just spin out over the next three days. Right, I think that is time for another hack on another day. I feel a cooking show coming on. Oh my gosh. I do too. Right, five colors every single day, team. Thanks, heaps, Tim. Pleasure. Denise, I can feel another project coming on, so tell me this lady's story. I think this one's pretty obvious, you know, we've been looking for anything with flowers on it. Yes, and this has multiple. It has, and I, so I just saw that, so the flowers up here, the flowers down here, and I just thought, this one's a no, this one's a no brainer, and it was $250. You couldn't buy the timber for that, to be honest, you could you? Can. and it's just, it's stunning, and the, the mirror, oh, I just, I just, I loved it. Where do you imagine this going for you at the Rose Farm? Where do you uh, see it? Oh my gosh, there's so many different places. Yeah. But we were talking too about our next charity shop. We have to get some beautiful china to put on here and some nice jugs. and stuff. So it could go in so many different places. And do you know what I find amazing about this? I was looking at it. I, I look at the workmanship, not just in you know putting the table on and the mirror in, but I look at the workmanship in the carving. That is all hand carved. Someone, you know, maybe even a century ago, I don't know, I'm not a historian, but a really long time ago, they forged the metal for these handles, which are in perfect condition. They carved out, like there's one, two, four, six, eight panels that they hand carved. And I don't know, I just, I feel like someone's heart and soul went into this. I know, I'm so glad we found it. We're, we're a bit blessed, really. Yeah. As always, sand and clean all surfaces before painting. A quick tip for taping up surfaces is to work with smaller pieces of tape rather than long pieces that will just end up sticking to themselves.
Now, I purchased this Porter's paint from my local Bristol store, and I'm actually going to be adding water into it. So it will be four parts paint and one part water. Now, this is a water-based paint, which means that the paint and the water will mix together just fine to create this really lovely wash after you apply it and rub most of the paint off. When you're painting detailed areas such as these flowers, make sure that you're getting the paint into every groove before you're wiping it off with a damp rag. Paint in the direction of the wood and wipe it off in the same direction. This will give you a really beautiful finish. Apply as much or as little paint as you see fit. If there's too much paint, apply a small amount of clean water to the rag and wipe the area down until you get the effect that is just perfect for you. Make sure you catch any little drips as soon as possible. With this technique, it allows the natural wood to show through, so any drips or marks or spills are still visible beneath the paint. The top of this buffet had clearly been well used throughout the years as there were coffee stains and other marks that sanding was never ever going to remove. So painting the top with a solid white will not only remove the problem of the stains but it creates a really beautiful contrast to the whitewash that's over the rest of the piece. When gapping, ensure the paint is completely dry and that the area is dust free. I keep a clean rag on hand to wipe away the excess immediately. The final stage of this makeover is the wax. So apply the wax liberally with a wax brush before then rubbing it back with a clean, dry cloth. The finished product is just amazing. This beautiful wash creates a beautiful, unique style, and the solid bench top is the perfect centerpiece for the buffet. Now, all that's left to do is move the buffet into its new home. style your living room. Patricia Lohan breaks down feng shui for your bathroom. 
Tammy Guest is back for another healthy hack for the Renault site and I get started on another DIY upcycling project.